Welcome to Celebrating Culture. This is a show we're putting together to celebrate culture and heritage. Culture is very important and our heritage is very important as we pass it down from generation to generation. In this episode, we're going to talk specifically about the Italian culture in New Orleans, which started around the 1850s. One of the things the Sicilians did when they migrated into New Orleans was to carry on a tradition of celebrating St. Joseph's Day, March 19th. About 600 years ago, the Sicilians prayed to St. Joseph to end the famine. And when the crops came in, they built altars thanking St. Joseph and giving the food to the poor. Now throughout New Orleans, and it's spread to North Louisiana and Mississippi and other locales, you'll find St. Joseph altars. I used to watch films of my dad build a St. Joseph altar in the 1950s before I was born. And he did that for his uncle in Monroe, Louisiana. It was a big tradition where all the family got together and cooked for days. And then they gave the food away to the poor. In this episode, we're going to talk to a few people who've carried on that important family tradition of building phenomenal St. Joseph's altars in New Orleans, Louisiana. Our first guest is going to be Jack Siciliano, who's building an altar at St. Francis Xavier Church in the spirit that his mother taught him on how to build an altar. We're also going to visit with Arthur Bricado. His ice cream is legendary in New Orleans. They've been around for over 100 years, and he carries on that family tradition and honors his family by building a small altar in his ice cream parlor. After visiting the altars, we're going to come back to the piazza here in New Orleans and see the flag throwers of Italy. The flag person was typically the most ferocious person in the army because he was leading the charge and the flag doubled as a spear. He not only was he carrying a flag, but he also knew how to use it to defend himself and attack. These flag throwers have taken those skills that they learned as spearmen leading armies and now they display them for our entertainment. I'm Jack Siciliano from St. Francis Xavier Parish in Metairie, Louisiana. And we're right now uh, in the midst of celebrating the Feast of St. Joseph here within our church parish in the school gymnasium. We are one of the largest and last year we were rated one of the top five uh, altars. I think what makes our altar different is I brought with knowledge I had as a young child watching my grandmother and parents make St. Joseph's altars. I watched them and learned and I always remember my grandmother saying that she didn't want to see too much of the tablecloth, hence the density of our altar. There's food, flowers, um, it's just almost totally covered. I think that's what makes our altar a little bit more traditional and a little bit different. This year's altar, we have probably close to 30,000 cookies, which are traditional to all St. Joseph's altars. Since we're in Louisiana, we thought we would add a, a little Louisiana flair by having breads uh, cut and baked in the shape of crawfish, large turtles, and alligators, which are really indigenous to our area. And it just adds a little bit uh, local atmosphere to uh, what we do here to keep the tradition ongoing. In addition to the altar viewing, we serve in our school cafeteria the traditional pasta Milanese dinner, which is a pasta with a meatless sauce. Uh, it's a red gravy made with consorte, which is a sardine base. And we serve an Italian salad, Italian bread, and a dessert, and it's all complimentary. We do take donations though, so uh, that helps us to defray the cost. All of the food that is consumable at the end of the evening is boxed up and taken to multiple charities, 10 to maybe 15 different charities, and to needy families. Um, so that's part of our mission is to help the homeless, help the needy, and not to waste much. The food that is non-consumable, non-edible, is properly boxed, and it's discarded of properly. Uh, in our parish, we take the blessed food, we don't put it in the garbage can, we actually take it to the Mississippi River and we feed it to the fish. So that cycle returns itself to where it basically originated from. 
So there's very, very little waste. And then at the end of the celebration, there's a crew that assembles again, and we dismantle everything, box it back up, and it returns to storage to the following year. My name is Arthur Bracado. I operate uh, Angelo Bracado's Ice Cream and Confections in New Orleans with my family. We've been doing this uh, for over 111 years. We make Italian pastries, uh, biscotti, gelato, spumoni, cassata, cannoli. My family came from Cefalu in Sicily when the Great Migration in the early 1900s, and we've been in New Orleans ever since. We're celebrating uh, St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, with an uh, altar that we've been doing since at least the last 60 or 70 years. When we went down in the French Quarter, uh, my grandparents did a huge St. Joseph's altar with all the foods and breads and cakes and pastries. With the older people gone, it's a very difficult job to continue, but we, we need to continue our traditions so we still do it on a much smaller scale with cakes and breads and pastries and cookies. We have certain things of Sicilian origin, the, the pupacoulova, since which is uh, biscotti with the, with the egg, that the egg is cooked in there, used in Sicily for Easter. And since St. Joseph's Day always falls on Lent in the Easter season, this is always included on the St. Joseph's altar. Another item, St. Lucy was a patron in Sicily, but they always add the St. Lucy's eyes. It's made out of fig, and that's always included on the St. Joseph's altar as well. St. Joseph's Day is always a very busy day. People come out, uh, Italians as well as non-Italians, to visit St. Joseph's altars and to celebrate in the feast. Uh, and it's a feast of the family. And St. Joseph was a patron of the uh, head of the Holy Family and that you know, this is a family feast and everyone likes to come and enjoy and participate in the event. group who should tell us about it. Yeah, so we are the flag wavers from San Sepolcro. San Sepolcro is a, a little town east side from Florence in Tuscany and we do this tradition as the first group in Italy born in 1953, so 63 years ago. We are the first group made in Italy that uh, uh, made this kind of show. Our group is 80 people, 80 people. but uh, usually we go around the world but 18, 12, 15, 14, depends. And okay. you been, where else do you go? Now we stay uh, one week here in New Orleans. Uh, we was in Brazil performing uh, one month ago and then we go back to Italy, perform in Italy and uh, all over Europe for this year and in October in Mexico. Tradition of the flags uh, born as a military tradition, as uh, Mr. Mazzelli said before, is a military tradition and became a game during the centuries, you know. And uh, so with Palio, you know, with like Siena, and so the tradition oh, yes, be became a game because the flags, once upon a time you have the, like a blade on top and foot on the bottom to attack and defend, uh -huh. you know. So the, the, the flags fortunately uh, lost the, the blade and then is a, a, a piece, you know, just for to remember. <laughs> and from here you go to? Back to Italy. Back to Italy. Yeah. If, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how should they do that? Okay. Contact. Contact. Is there a website? Yeah, it's um, flagshow.com. Flagshow.com. Dot com. Uh, and mail is uh, info at flagshow.com. If you want to go, please look up flagshow.com. Go see. And is there certain fest year, uh, months for festivals? Is um, our festival in, in Italy? In, in Italy, September. September is the best time to go to Italy yeah. and see the flag show right there. Come to San Sepulcro. Lucia, I want to thank you for thank you so much. to New Orleans. Okay. And, and we really appreciate it and very proud to be here. St. Joseph's is a great time to come to New Orleans because the weather is still not hot. 
It's not cold either, it's middle March. You always know when it's gonna be. The Irish parades go on and the Mardi Gras Indians. So for 10 days, it's a very festive time in New Orleans with not the hustle bustle associated with Mardi Gras. And a lot of great people are celebrating their culture. And enjoy a cannoli. Mm, I love that. <laughs> it's a really good cannoli. Ciao! Welcome to the Italian Piazza in New Orleans, Louisiana. And right next door is the American Italian Cultural Center, which hosts numerous events throughout the year and is a great place to read about the Italian history. When you subscribe to Awe News, you'll get updated on all the videos we're making as far as the celebrities that come into New Orleans to talk about Italian culture, the parties, the events, what's going on. It's just a great way to learn about Italian history, the values, and what makes Italian being fun. Ipolare Italiano.